like to draw a comparison to using sports psychology and getting our car fixed and sports psychology and fixing our hitters. Imagine you take your car into the mechanic and it's squeaking, it's making noise, it's puttering. There's all kind of problems with it. And your mechanic says, hey listen, it's just a little noise. Don't worry about it. That sound you hear in the front wheel well, <clears throat> stay positive, okay? Keep driving it, it's gonna get better. Oh, and that smoke that keeps coming out of the exhaust, just have positive thoughts and everything is gonna be okay. I think you can tell where I'm going with this. You know, when our car is actually running bad and you know the timing belts are slipping and the, the, the CV joints are, are broken and they're wobbly and there's smoke coming out of the, uh, the exhaust and it's puttering there's a physical signs that you know what things need to be corrected you know smoothing out with psychology doesn't make your car run better and neither will it make your hitters operate better you see our hitters have mechanical adjustments obviously they have to make and there's adjustments with their timing the timing belts and cars go bad and so does our timing as hitters it gets bad listen I'm not trying to bash or dismiss the value of sports psychology and mental training I, I know there's value behind it but if we, we, we really want to instill confidence in our players, the mental side is sometimes is just washed out. Once that player steps into the batter's box, there is something real going on. I know there's anxiousness, I know there's anxiety, but believe me, if they learn how to, to perform well, it will erase the anxiety. Where there is success, there is confidence. So the simplicity and, and the, the logical response for, for coaches and players and parents who are trying to get this fixed is well, what method am I going to use to get it right? For me, adjusting the timing is always the place to start. Checking out timing my vision is a technique to it. Timing my adrenaline, there is a technique to it. Understanding the timing principles, the, 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 the interior aspects of timing revolve not around the release point, but around the common denominator on the pitcher's delivery. Next, I need to examine how is my body moving? You know, w one thing I tell players is this, when that ball is coming into the strike zone, that's the acceleration phase of your swing. During the acceleration phase of your swing, the batter needs to practice and train and exercise one thought. The ball is out there, now the ball is right here. You should be totally consumed on the ultimate thought, the ball. But most of our traditional hitting instruction and batting instruction spins around the idea that while the ball is coming into the strike zone, let's think about where our feet are. Think about driving the back knee, getting the hip turned, you know, getting the elbow into the slot, keep the shoulders closed, put your head down, you know, use your wrist. I I know they're they're valuable, they have some, some credence, but that's not what actually happens in the game. Once the game switch is turned on, the hitter is thinking about one thing the ball and controlling the depth perception of that ball so why don't we train our hitters to do that with the best hitting drill video series our hitters will learn how to manage all the mechanical adjustments and organize the movement patterns for a good efficient swing not during the acceleration phase the amazing side of this drill and time and time again I get testimonies I just don't put them on on online is how fast this drill process works it's be, and it works because while the ball is coming in on the acceleration phase 
you're, we are still training our hitters to think only about controlling the ball. Let me say it again. You're learning how to control the ball. All the changes in, all the, in organizing the, the, the technical parts of your body and movement skills it happens on the deceleration side of the swing. This is why this drill is so unique and it's, and it's, and it's actually demonstrated nightly in our, our Major League Baseball games. Night after night, if you watch closely, you see players performing this drill in the game. My goal is to inspire you and motivate you to realize your clock is ticking, both as coaches and as players. Sometimes if, you, if you're a coach that relies upon you know, the performance of your players and, and, and getting wins, well, you know what? We need to get our players to play better better. And if, if you're a player, your clock is ticking. You only have so many years to play this game before it's gonna pass you by. And we want to be as, as young as we can be and as good as we can get soon and fast. This video series, especially right now, whether it's the off season or during the season, it should be a staple in your repertoire of daily batting practice and right before you go into the batter's box in the game while you're in the dugout. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, while you're in the, on, on deck circle. And just remember, Knowledge doesn't decrease in value. Knowledge will always increase in value. May the Lord bless you.